Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for taking time to be with us. Uh, I am Gaddafi from Nafil Academy. So we at Nafil Academy deliver high quality continuing uh, professional education courses and content for dental surgeons and dental support staff. Today, we are partnering with Nafil Counseling to bring you this ongoing webinar series, supporting mental health at work. So the impact of burnout on your well-being. So one of the leading mental health challenges in the workplace is burnout. Understanding that the warning signs and using the right strategies can help to minimize uh, the excessive stress. So before we begin our webinar, there are a few points that I would like to share. This webinar will be recorded. So if you have any uh, family or friends that would like to share this webinar, please visit the Nafil, Nafil Academy or Nafil Awareness um, channels on YouTube. So the recordings will be there. Um, and number two is uh, please feel free to post any questions uh, in the Q&A section at the bottom part of your Zoom. Um, and uh, our speaker will do her best to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. So now I would like to introduce our speaker, Zahira Masaud, is the Principal Counselor at Nafil Counseling. She has a Master's Degree in Professional Counseling and works with adults, adolescents, couples and families on a broad range of mental conditions, uh, mental health conditions such as stress, anxiety, depression and bipolar disorder. Without further ado, Zahira, please. Hi everyone, thank you again for joining me here today uh, in another series of our web webinars. Uh, today's webinar is supporting mental health at work and um, the topic that most of us are familiar with is the impact of burnout on your well-being. I'm Zahira, Principal Counselor of Nafil Counseling. A little bit of a background about me uh, and what I do here in Nafil. I help people from all walks of life, from young to old in your mental health journey. Um, my sole purpose here is to journey with my clients in therapy and give them insights to emotional health and well-being. Before we start, as what Gadafi had mentioned, uh, please note uh, that there will be a Q&A segment towards the end of this webinar. Meanwhile, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop us, uh, you know, to drop it in the chat box and I will answer it uh, a little bit later towards the end of the webinar. Um, please note that uh, this webinar today is solely meant for guidance purposes only, okay? There are many resources and websites you can refer to for more information on today's topic. Or you are always welcome to reach out to me via email if you like to have some of these resources. Okay, so let's begin. So, here are the topics we will be covering today. Uh, risk factors and long-term effects of burnout, recognizing symptoms, strategies, overcoming burnout, uh, what can employers do to uh, prevent burnout and support employees' mental health at work. So what is burnout, right? <laughs> burnout is more than just feeling tired. Workplace burnout became so intense in the recent years that employees had to face major work and life adjustments due to the pandemic. WHO declared burnout as the occupational phenomenon in the 11 revision of the international classifications of diseases. So can you imagine how bad it has impacted employees to a point that burnout is a legitimate diagnosis now. The definition of burnout uh, as address is a syndrome resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been managed successfully. But the funny thing is that um, most of my clients do actually love what they do. I was puzzled at first thinking, what could be the case then that has resulted to them feeling this way? Uh, the thing here is the reason why employees are suffering from this is that um, I found that there are underlying causes like self-sabotaging linked to past traumas that weren't addressed at all. What if I tell you that um, overworking or having a low paying job or not really liking what you do at work does not cause burnout, but what really causes it 
is unresolved trauma that impedes the way you process negative thought patterns and behavior cause burnout the most. Okay, here, 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 why it is. Okay, let me explain why. Uh, when I work with my clients, I cover everything from childhood experiences to family history to diet and so on. Believe it or not, each and every of these points that I just mentioned affects our well being and the way we internalize our concept of self and how we operate in our everyday lives that cause burnout. Um, interestingly, um, most, most have in some way perceive themselves as being judged or criticized or not even feel that, you know, uh, good enough in what they do. Uh, this can affect their self-worth. For example, one of my clients who have difficulty managing boundaries in toxic relationships find it difficult to understand boundaries at work. Uh, hence, this can cause workplace burnout. She tends to take up um, every project of work, although she, she's already like fully occupied with her own pile of work because she has no concept of healthy boundaries and when to say no. Another case would be uh, someone who has experienced bullying during childhood may suffer from low self-worth and manifest in people-pleasing behavior that can contribute to burnout at work. Hence, the root cause of burnout can also stem from unresolved traumas. I hope that makes sense to you, okay? So on the other hand, uh, these past few years, pandem the pandemic has accelerated and exhibited long-standing corporate challenges to employee health and well-being, particularly employee mental health. This has resulted in reports of rapidly rising rates of burnout around the world. Don't get me wrong, Work is important to all of us on many levels. Doing the, a job we enjoy and find satisfying can provide a meaningful focus for our lives as well as bring an income, right? However, when work stress becomes chronic and when we are not managing it effectively, it can take a toll on our well-being. Okay, so what are the risk factors uh, and effects risk factors and long-term effects of burnout. Uh, workplace burnout isn't just a small thing that people need to figure out how to get over. It is a difficult and impactful reality that can lead to many negative consequences in all areas of your life. Um, people dealing with workplace burnout symptoms and job stress are often impacted in the following ways. And here are the risk factors and long-term effects of burnout. Firstly, is physical health issues. Um, you can have excessive stress, fatigue, uh, increased likelihood for heart diseases, uh, high blood pressure, um, type 2 diabetes, respiratory issues. Um, there might be a chance for death before 45 as well if you don't take care of it, right? Uh, there are also mental health issues that can stem out of burnout, which is depression, anger, irritability, anxiety, increase of likelihood for mental health needs like medication or hospitalization, okay? So uh, the next one would be personal consequences. And what I mean by this is that you might indulge yourself to alcohol or substance abuse, uh, isolation from friends and family, responsibility with finances, anger towards family members, uh, inability to fulfill responsibilities. For the professional consequences would be job dissatisfaction dissatisfaction, withdrawing from colleagues and friends, inability to do your job well and drain on company resources. As you can see, the impact of work stress on all aspects of your life is extremely serious and should not be taken lightly. Um, the issues that stress in your job can create for you are strenuous and require attention to correct before it's too late. Okay, so how do we spot the signs of burnout? As mentioned earlier, defined by WHO, burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been managed successfully. Uh, you can feel uh, feelings of energy depletion, exhaustion, 
uh, increase of mental distance from one's job or feeling of negativity, cynicism related to one's job, and reduce of professional efficacy. Okay, so burnout refers specifically to occupational context and should not be applied to describe experiences in other areas of life. Fun fact, burnout is an occupational phenomenon rather than a medical condition and it dates all the way back to 1970s and has been found um, in across range of different professions, including health, social care, uh, law enforcement and education. In these current times, with the effects of pandemic, burnout has affected countless uh, employees across all sorts of professions around the world. There are stages to burnout, especially when the job is demanding and stress piles on. Understanding each stage can help you under identify signs of burnout before it becomes chronic. But first, um, please understand there is a difference between burnout and uh, stress, okay? So, uh, stress is when you can't cope with juggling too many things uh, at the same time. Example, too much work to handle, uh, too many work responsibilities, too many hours spent working. Whereas burnout, on the other hand, is typically like uh, you don't have the e enough mental capacity, uh, not enough motivation, not enough energy, not enough to care about your work. Uh, the same can be said for um, when you misinterpret depression for burnout. Certain depression-related symptoms such as exhaustion and difficulty performing tasks can masquerade as burnout. In some cases, burnout is work-related and does not affect your day-to-day -day life. Depression, however, impacts every aspect of your life with persistent feelings of hopefulness, uh, I mean, hopelessness, worthlessness, and uh, helplessness. Uh, so depression, unlike burnout, does not usually have a single cause. Uh, specific stress can sometimes create depression, but depression may last longer than after the challenge has passed. You may be at a higher risk of burnout if you have poor self-esteem, unrealistic expectation of self in the workplace, or uncomfortable coping with uh, any kind of stressful situations. Um, what I meant uh, earlier, remember, when I talk about the underlying issue and the root cause of burnout, uh, Having said that, you may also experience burnout at a higher rate if your job requires a heavy workload, your company is understaffed and has conflicts in the workplace or doesn't reward work when there is a job well done. Um, so when the employee keeps doing what they're doing with all those work coming on, they can suffer from burnout. So um, you often find yourself overloaded with things and weary and unable to perform your best when you're suffering from burnout. It is a state of emotional, bodily and mental exhaustion caused by prolonged severe stress. As the stress builds up, you begin to lose interest and drive uh, in the activity at hand. So here are the uh, symptoms that you will want to take note of if you feel that you may be heading towards burnout, okay? Um, burnout symptoms may vary depending on which phase of burnout uh, you're in. In general, there are three symptoms to be aware of, which is the exhaustion, inefficacy, reduce personal accomplishment and cynicism. Uh, for exhaustion, the fatigue presents itself both mentally and physically. Uh, the energy you typically have is zapped and persistent exhaustion. Okay, for inefficacy, um, reduce is, is in another words, you call it reduced personal accomplishment or performance. This tends to manifest when you feel your work is insufficient and you're incapable of performing your work. For example, you may lose pleasure in work. You previously uh, received joy from your usual creativity may wane and it can become harder to concentrate. For cynicism would be depersonalization. This is a feeling of indifference or, um, you know, 
in other words, you tend to feel numb. For example, uh, you may become more cynical in your inner workings or uh, lacking the ability to communicate effectively with people. Uh, symptoms may also present as physical and emotional. Uh, so exhaustion is one of them. So first, people who have been impacted with depleted uh, will feel really depleted and um, emotionally fatigued or drained, unable to cope, feeling tired and lacking in vitality. Some of the physical symptoms include uh, digestive problems, fatigue, headaches, nausea, and so on. Uh, lack of motivation at work. You might find yourself uh, increasingly feeling irritated or um, find your difficulty in performing your job. You may become cynical about your working environment for uh, or you know, with just being around your co-workers. At the same time, individuals may also begin to emotionally distance themselves from their profession. Uh, the other one would be reduced performance at work. Uh, these, you know, burnout mostly impacts daily responsibility at work, at home, and when caring for family members. People who are burnout are dissatisfied with their jobs and find it difficult to focus, which is reduce their performance you know, um, at the end of it. Uh, the other one would be facing cognitive problems. Persistent stress can impair your capability to pay attention and concentrate at work. When we are under stress, our attention focuses only on the negative factor that we perceive as threat. You may notice that you're becoming more forgetful and having a harder time remembering things. Uh, the other one would be pessimism. You may find yourself feeling more negative uh, towards uh, things around work, uh, such as there's uh, frustration, irritation than usual. So uh, you may be affected by every single thing that's around you. And the other one would be dissatisfaction. You may be feeling uh, unsatisfied. If not, I feel uh, most of them describe it as feeling trapped in their job uh, they, or social life or family life. They feel stuck at where they are. Uh, another easier way to identify burnout would be to recognize the physical symptoms of burnout. Um, there is a host of physical symptoms which you should be taking uh, into account uh, and these are the warning signs for those struggling to cope. There would be headaches, uh, you would experience uh, gastro disorders, hypertension, disrupted sleep cycle, uh, low immunity and muscle pains. Okay, um, What are the mental and emotional signs of burnout? People who are burnout as a result of work-related stress may develop mental burnout and and exhibit any or all of the following symptoms, such as reduced performance, anxiety, feeling of detachment, difficulty in concentrating, fatigue, increased irritability, and um, pessimism. Okay, so what are the five stages of burnout? Okay, burnout isn't a sudden onset of feelings. Instead, your thought... Uh, Feelings and actions progress through a series of straight stages. The initial stage may not feel like much, but you can eventually lead to an habitual phase, which makes it hard to carry out your, you know, uh, workload. So uh, the first one would be honeymoon phase. Um, honeymoon phase sounds familiar, right? Uh, you know, like honeymoon phase in a marriage, this stage comes with energy and optimism when you start off something. Whether it is starting a new job or tackling a new task, it is common to feel uh, set satisfied, you know, at first that leads to period of productivity and ability to tap into your creative side. The second one would be onset of stress phase. Eventually, the honeymoon phase dwindles and you begin to experience stress. Not every second of your day is stressful, but there are frequent times when stress takes uh, over. 
As this stage begins, take notice of any physical or mental signs. You may start to uh, lose focus more easily or be less productive when completing tasks. Um, physically, fatigue can start to set in, um, making it more difficult to sleep, enjoy activities outside of work. The third one would be chronic stress phase. You'll reach a point where stress becomes more persistent or chronic. As the pressure mounts, the stress is likely to be consistently affect your work. Examples include feeling of apathy, not completing work on time, being late for work, or procrastinating during tasks. Socially, you may withdraw from normal work-related conversations. In other cases, you may become more angry and lash out at your co-workers. Sometimes these feelings um, follow you home and can affect relationships with friends and families. Um, the fourth one would be the burnout phase. This phase is when you reach your limit and no longer function as you begin uh, you know, to be feeling um, overwhelmed. Problems at work begin to consume you to a point where you obsess over them. At times, you may also feel numb and experience extreme self-burnout. Physical symptoms will become intense, leading to chronic headaches, stomach issues, gastro problems. Uh, friends and family members may also notice there are some behavioral changes in you. Okay, so the last part would be the habitual burnout phase. If left untreated, uh, burnout can become part of your everyday life and eventually lead to anxiety or depression. You can also begin to experience chronic mental and physical fatigue that prevents you from working. Your job status may put in jeopardy if you continue on this path. These may be an indication that the symptoms are chronic and have affected your mental and physical and emotional conditions severely uh, than to have stress or burnout occasionally, okay? So what are the causes of job burnout, right? There are many things that can lead to job burnout and it differs for every person, but um, I feel like there are common factors that can be identified as reasons behind the burnout, uh, stre especially stresses at work, okay? So a feeling of a little control, not being able to make decision um, about your schedule or workload can lead to job burnout. Being unsure about your expectations, if you don't know what your manager will expect of you, you're likely going to be frustrated with your work, a poor work culture, uh, the attitude and morale of people around you will directly impact your satisfaction with your job. Um, your boss who micromanages you, key co-workers and a lack of friends at your office can lead to job burnout too, okay? So a lack of work-life balance, if you have, if you have um, been giving a lot of energy and time into your work, your personal life can suffer. Uh, so which can lead you to resent time in the office. High engagement with your work, being over-engaged with your job can lead to you feeling constant need to overwork and involve in too many projects. Uh, this leads to stressful situations and, and causes emotional exhaustion. While people being highly engaged in a good thing um, that they like at work, it can also uh, lead to high job stress and burnout. For example, while millennials tend to uh, value work-life balance, they may have an increased risk of developing burnout because they are highly driven and highly motivated at the workplace. So what are the strategies uh, that you can use to overcome burnout? Um, okay, uh, and how to recover from burnout, the burnout phase. At this point, burnout probably sounds stressful enough to wonder if you can ever recover from it. The good news is there are ways to bounce back and learn to enjoy your work again. 
for starters, you need to be honest with yourself and recognize the burnout. It would be difficult to move forward if you can't see the problem yourself. So stay in check with how you're feeling, um, or you know, whether it's emotional or physical or mental, you can you know notice those things by yourself. So the first thing that you should do is talk to your boss or your superiors and let them know your current struggles. Burnout exists at a corporate level, your leadership team may make a significant impact on how you see your, your workplace and the resources available to you. You may certainly not uh, be the only one who's facing difficulties and um, a cultural transformation may be required okay, to change that cycle. They may suggest um, for you to take some time off to recharge, but if this is, isn't offered, request a personal day or two to take a step back and reassess your situation. Consider taking a vacation to truly unwind. That will really, really help you, okay? So before you return, find new ways to cope with your job and find a work-life balance. Set a work schedule that allows you to make time for your personal life uh, in a balanced manner. When you are burned out, you must make every effort to keep work and home life separate. Okay, the link that exhibits the situation and before you realize it, uh, you've come to identify home with the same sentiments you had at work. So make a physical separation between work and uh, personal life. If your employment needs you to work from home, uh, look for co-working place or a coffee shop or cafe where you can uh, do some of those works from. So it separates you from, you know, how you identify your home and workplace, okay? So it is important to prioritize on self-care and schedule time for yourself. A loss of interest in self-care is one of the phases of burnout. You may start to neglect your physical well-being in extreme instances. Make time for fundamental necessities such as food, drink, exercise, and socializing. Uh, this can be as simple as taking breaks throughout the day or going for a walk during lunchtime. Uh, when your job requires you to work for long hours in the end, make sure you have adequate sleep and rest. Uh, while at work, know your limitations. People in your job tend to say yes to everything. So as they feel it's necessary to showcase their value to their bosses, right? Uh, these can be dangerous, of course. So now later, you may find yourself drowning in too many tasks. Uh, to resolve this problem, don't be afraid to say no. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, knowing your limitations also includes a set work schedule. In today's work uh, from home environment or hybrid situation, uh, there are practically no boundaries at all and it's easy to uh, be flexible and work longer hours or respond to emails or texts after working hours. So while answering a call at night may seem harmless to you, uh, it can lead to bad habits. So remember to practice healthy boundaries with work and home. Okay. So it is also important to take regular breaks during your workday, no matter how inconvenient it may seem. These breaks will help you reset, re-evaluate um, your emotions and more. Uh, similarly, you you feel yourself starting to get angry or too stressed, walk away. You know, when you feel agitated, being uh, too consumed with whatever is happening around you, walk away. Take a break and clear your head. Uh, one of the other things that I feel that is really, really helpful would be mindfulness. Um, you know, mindfulness is the discipline to paying attention to the present moment and accepting it without judgment. In stressful moments, it may also help you to practice, uh, you know, how to be grounded. Um, you can also practice breathing techniques to lower your stress. All these resources are available online on YouTube. There's tons of breathing techniques that you 
you can follow or mindfulness apps that you can um, you know subscribe to uh, to you know just have a space and be grounded again okay in the workplace this entails dealing with circumstances with honesty and patience you know so it is an excellent stress reduction method that also improves general well-being Honestly speaking, uh, as a counsellor and a mental health professional, I too had been, um, you know, through my own phase of job burnout. This happened to me when uh, I was new in the industry and had too many people to please and taking on a lot of clients at the same time, um, navigating my way through a new work environment. So it, had, it took a toll on me. Um, and, and what I have learned is that it is important to pay close attention to your body and mind, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed and exhausted at work. First thing is to figure out how you can cut down a number of uh, commitments you have in your life. I know this can be really tough, but this is the first step to recovery. Sit down and write them all down uh, so you have a clear direction on you know, what to cut off and what to keep. Uh, my fear at that point of time was underperforming. So then I realized I should slow down and get my priorities right. I can't keep all the eggs in one basket. So this way, I slowly understood that I needed to uh, what I needed to thrive in what I do. Uh, and hence, I learned the art of self-care and why it is important to do so. If you are struggling with burnout and are, and are unsure of where to turn, seek help and support wherever you can find it, whether it's with friends, family, co-workers. Uh, if you don't have any of these support, you can also reach out to your EAP provider or mental health professional for guidance, which can help you develop coping strategies to find a happy medium with your work. Okay, so lastly, what can employers do to prevent burnout and support employees' mental health at work? This is really, really important for employers because I feel that uh, managing burnout and prioritizing men employee mental health and well-being is an organizational issue that can reap benefits for broader work processes, performance management, and employee experience. So here are some of the tips I would like to share um, okay, to support your employees. So you can build a culture of care, review current policies on um, working hours, whether it's flexible work work hours, leave, or employee benefits that may influence attitude towards work and rest. Uh, be consistent with the practices that enable work-life balance, okay? Um, I think the other one would be ensure managerial support, equip managers with the right training and skill set to detect employees at risk of burnout and resources to support those experiencing it. Keep work expectations, workload, um, and time pressures manageable and sustainable. This message is even more impactful when it comes from the senior leadership and for employees and managers to see senior leaders leading by examples uh, to leave the values. The other one is uh, develop a network of internal well-being coaches. Uh, it's widely available right now um, where you can teach and identify leaders to champion a broad and diverse network of individuals to nurture emotional in, and mental wellness in the workplace. But there are well-being coaches who can help employees uh, identify and address sources of stress, challenge negative thinking, and work with colleagues to build resilience. Uh, one thing that I really, really find that is impactful on employees is encourage team get-togethers, allow opportunities for non-work activities at regular intervals for employees to foster just that connection with colleagues, such as celebrating special events, joining clubs for shared interests, 
for colleagues who are remote, working remotely, arrange so socialization through online catch-ups and team building games such as virtual charades or online cooking classes. Okay, I think that would really foster a, a culture of care. Um, the other one I feel that is very important is adopt active listening strategies, uh, arrange focus group sessions or plus surveys to know how your employees are feeling uh, and to help them identify root causes of stress and intervene before it turns into occupational burnout. Managers can also set aside time for employees to safely express work concerns and discuss how to address issues together. Um, the last one I feel offer, you can offer tangible resources, provide employees with support services to navigate challenges they are facing. These can include, um, you know, hiring an EAP uh, provider and access to digital tools such as mindfulness applications to help cope with daily uh, stressors and uh, improve overall well-being. While there is no complete solution to burnout, organizations can approach employee well-being thoughtfully with empathy and creativity. Employers can also effectively support employees' mental health and overall wellness by taking steps to prioritize their physical, social, emotional, and financial well-being. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the webinar. I hope this webinar has given you some of the insights to, um, into the impact of burnout and well-being and the steps you can take to overcome burnout at work. Uh, I now open this time to Q&A. So I'm leaving it to you guys uh, to you know, put out your questions to me. Okay, Zahira, there is a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, says that I have only heard the term burnout during the COVID lockdown. Uh, during the COVID lockdown, uh, did this become an issue when people started to work from home? Um, well, like I said, burnout has dated all the way from the 1970s, but uh, that was also a you know occupational phenomenon. Um, but because I think it's more prominently used right now uh, because everyone's working from home and there's no boundaries from that work-life balance. Whereas your, your work is, you know, somehow being brought into your home and your rest time and there's no boundaries to that. So burnout is then, you know, more uh, prominent during the COVID lockdown. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so uh, the other um, questions that I usually get are what are the telltale signs of job burnout? Um, I feel that if you find yourself asking uh, these questions, um, like are you no longer find satisfaction, uh, you no longer find satisfaction in your job or you feel like you're dragging yourself to work, feeling demotivated or finding it uh, increasingly hard to concentrate on your task at hand. You know, these are some of the questions or maybe it could also be uh, your attitude changes towards your colleagues and you have caused some sort of, you know, trouble or rift between your work environment Environment, then you may be suffering from it now, okay, which can be damaging to your mental health and overall productivity. However, I feel that uh, there are many ways to recover from burnout by taking steps as mentioned in the webinar. Um, uh, we have time for one more question. Okay, so um, I there is one question that I felt that, that is really important here, which is, can burnout affect my relationship? Yes and yes, okay? Burnout is definitely uh, detrimental to your relationships. Um, of course, you know, when you suffer from burnout, you, you come back home with bad mood and might, you know, might catch yourself frequently being irritated with everything that's around you. And you might grieve, you know, you might fend your grievances to your partner or close friends, uh, resulting in unneeded conflicts and stress. Uh, so I feel like when you're fatigued and stressed, when you're easily irritated, it can spiral to bigger things that, and if left unchecked, 
it can definitely affect your relationship. Uh, you know, I feel it is, even though, you know, it's affecting your relationship at home, I still feel that it is acceptable to take time out for yourself and tell your, you know, for your partner or your friends that you just need some time on your own in order to recover from that burnout um, while maintaining those connections, okay? Uh, remember, you can only love and care for other people if you first love and care for yourself. So there right. are some, yeah, there are some questions also. Um, is procrastinating linked to burnout? Oh yes, of course, definitely procrastinating is um, definitely linked to burnout um, because when you, you know, when you have a pile of work and you're not, you know, being forthcoming and doing your work at that point of time and you're just putting it behind, um, you know, it shows that your ability to process whatever is going on is you're not totally present for doing your work at that point of time. So, so to accomplish the work successfully, you must listen to your body, like I said, and figure out why you're feeling this way. Um, you know, once you identify what's going on, whether it's fatigue, whether it's tired, uh, I mean, it is linked to procrastination. Um, you know, you need to identify those things. And when you identify those things, but not just, you know, you could identify, yes, you're heading towards there. So what can I do to help myself, uh, you know, so that I can't procrastinate? If, if the procrastination persists, then there has to be some avenue of just taking time out break to yourself and get away telling your bosses that you need uh, that time on your own to process whatever you're going through. Uh, because just by sweeping, sweeping them under the carpet will eventually spill over to something that's detrimental to your mental health. And this can lead to anxiety or depression. Okay. So um, since we are running out of time, that- means uh, uh, Zaira, there's, there's that one question. I don't know whether it's a question or comment. Okay, one person's burnout workload can be another person's invigorating work. Could burnout yeah. be caused by a misfit or mismatch of personality to the kind of work to be done? In which case, is it best to quit and find another job? Oh, wow. Okay, that's a very interesting question. Um, thank you for that question. Okay. Well, like I said um, in the earlier part of the webinar itself, as I had mentioned, if there are some unresolved traumas that hasn't been addressed, I feel that it's good to look at those things and um, probably see a mental health professional to address those underlying issues and understand why you don't feel as much joy in, in performing your work. Um, whereas the other person find it, you know, very interesting or the other person is more motivated than you. Uh, so you need to identify what is really going on there. Although, you know, this job role that's given to you is something that you um, probably have applied for or interested in, um, it's good to identify the underlying traumas. Um, then through that process itself, you're able to uh, work through and understand and work along those root causes of your own issue. If the work is still feels unsatisfying for you, then yeah, by all means, you can always find another job. You know, we are not bounded to just one thing in life. I feel like it is good to, you know, explore our options if that is not a good fit for you. Or if it's causing more misery than happiness. I hope that answers the question. Okay, so I think we have come to the end of our Q&A. Thank you everyone for uh, your questions and for, for being um, present here today. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to drop me an email and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you for taking your time to join us here today. Until we meet again, um, have a restful night and always be kind to yourself and to each other. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here.